Hello, hello, and welcome officially to 2024. So let me be the first, or maybe one of many, to tell you Happy New Year. It is really a joy to be back here. I know I have been away for a few months. Life has been lifing, but I am officially back, and I'm really excited to be sharing this particular video with you today. So we're in a relaxed setting. I have my cup of tea. You can see it right here. Tea time is me time. Anyway, so we're just going to be sipping tea and I'm going to be sharing a few things on my heart as we go into the new year with regards to female leadership and refinement for female leaders. But first, <laughs> let's talk about what's been going on over the last few months. So I took a few steps out of life so that I could just reflect, refresh, re-energize, and really find, ask myself many questions and get the answers to what those questions were. And I think I am really excited to be back here today with some sort of clarity, uh, some sort of insight, some sort of focus as to what this year holds for you and for me. So drum rolls, doo -doo 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 -doo, bam, she's back. <laughs> anyway, okay, so I want to share with you what I, and I have my little remarkable here that I'm going to be referring to because I, I wrote a few notes down on there that I wanted to share with you. I'm going to try and keep this video as short as possible, but uh, stay with me, right? The information is really great that I'm going to be sharing with you. There's, there's some good stuff coming your way, some good stuff. Okay, so first off, I think the 2024, as we know it, is going to really be the year of female leadership. And what does that mean when we say the year of female leadership, we, the year of refinement? What does it mean? We have more female leaders. Well, more women rise up to leadership positions. Well, yes, all that's going to happen. But there's a certain type of woman that's going to not just be able to rise to certain leadership positions, but to be there for the long haul, to make impact, and to enjoy that position of leadership without feeling strained, overwhelmed, stressed, frustration or asking herself if she was created to be in that position. And I think that's what I've been studying over the past few months and delving into to see what are the things we need to have as female leaders that will really help us be resilient and love the positions that we're stepping into. So it's a certain type of woman that's going to enjoy this continued rise of female leadership that we've been witnessing over the past few months, uh, over the past few years rather, and that we will continue to witness as we go along. Two things to really think about as we think of this is that first off, we need a style of leadership that is more empathetic and more inclusive. I think we've all seen what this masculine style of leadership is about. And more and more organizations are beginning to recognize that for them to step into the next phase, especially with the advent of younger people coming into the workforce, the style of leadership has to change a little bit. The culture in certain organizations has to flip a little bit. The younger generation, those that are coming into the workforce now have been built differently, raised differently, and they're asking for different things from the organizations that they now choose to work with. So a style of governance that's empathetic, that's inclusive, and that brings a different holistic set of values and perspectives to the table is what is really critical as we enter into the year 2024 and into the rest of this decade. The second thing is we need a style of leadership that's instrumental in driving social change, in promoting gender equality, and in tackling issues from a holistic and nuanced perspective. We have black, we have white, and we have a gazillion and one shades of gray. We need leadership that's able to recognize that there's the black and white, and that there's everything on the inside, and is able to navigate how to holistically tackle situations adhering to or recognizing the nuances of our time. This is why it's so critical, and I've been teaching this for a few years now. This is why it's so critical for us as women to lean into our femininity, because there are some traits that we own uh, just because we're female, uh, just because we're created female. There are some traits that are inherent to us that if we can just lean into, 
uh, enhance a little bit more and master, we will be positioned already to take the center stage in this time and phase. So what are some of the challenges that we're facing as female leaders? You know it already. Number one is men are still the majority. Now, please hear me. Hear me clearly. A lot of the time when we talk about this male conversation and masculine leadership and female style, feminine style of leadership and men this and men that, a lot of people take it to mean that we are attacking men or we don't want men in the workforce. Nothing could be further from the truth. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we need the men and we need the masculine style of leadership to balance us out with our femininity. And even within ourselves as female leaders, we need to be able to navigate our masculine style of leadership and our feminine style of leadership so that we're not too wishy-washy and also so that we're not so autocratic. Uh, we get to the, a nice blend right in the middle. So this is not a male bashing conversation. No, not at all. This is a women rising conversation and women taking their seats at the table and women collaboratively working with men in a way that's not competing with them because you cannot compete with somebody on a battlefield that was created to favor them and expect that you're going to win. Did you get that? <laughs> I'm going to say it again. You cannot. Go to war or go to a battlefield, if you want to call it that, with somebody on a playing field that was created fundamentally to favor them and expect to win. The casualties will be too many, as we've obviously seen. So I'm not interested in teaching you how to fight with men. I don't even think we should. I don't believe we should be fighting with men. I'm here to teach you how to lean into how you're authentically wired, how you're authentically created. And so you can collaborate with everybody that you choose to work with, whether they are male or female. That's what it is. So if you're looking for some woman that's going to be teaching you how to bash men and how to bring them down, log out, log out now. This tree is not for you. <laughs> All right, so that's it. Men are still the majority. But what does this mean? It means that we need more women to rise up because we can only have significant voice when we have significant mass. We can only have significant voice, significant position, significant policy that's created to favor women when we have a significant mass of people around the table. And that means I don't need significant entry level people. That's great. We need them to enter, level, in, enter into the workforce in the first place. But we need significant leadership level people. So number one is that because men are still in the majority, it's a challenge for us. But still too few women around the leadership table. And those that are there after a few years, they check out. Why? Because there's stress and there's strain and they're asking, is this thing really for me? That's one. The second thing is there's difficulty. And this one, oh my goodness, this one is such a big deal. There is difficulty in creating supportive networks for women that really works and does what it is that it was created for. I was listening to an interview with, um, I'll call her Auntie Mo for the purpose of this, because she's older than I am, but with the legendary uh, Mo Abudu, Ms. Mo Abudu, and or Mrs. Mo Abudu. And I was listening to this interview that she had given, I think with, with was it BBC or Bloomberg or someone? And she was talking about the idea of women supporting women and the associations that she's had with women and how that has helped her, how that support or lack thereof has impacted her life. And I encourage you to go on her Instagram page to look, look for that. My sister and I also did a really short uh, live on Instagram a few weeks ago, and you can check that vi uh, video out. It's about 15 minutes or so. Because we're, we're having lunch, a late lunch somewhere. We're talking about this idea of, do women really support women? And in my life, I can say, yes, women have supported women. But it's still such a close circle. We are almost half the population, I think 49.5%. If 5% of that, 10%, 20% of the, is all that's supporting, we need to drastically enhance. Then when we even speak about these communities that we're creating with women, the question is, what are we creating these communities for? Let me take a tea sip break. I am enjoying this amazing spicy chai tea. Gosh, it just, listen, it's, yeah, 
Okay, I'm not even gonna, but it just does something to me. The smell, if you like, a, a, it's a French vanilla spicy chai, right? That's that's the one I'm enjoying, and it's it blows my mind every time I have a sip of it. It's like it's like heaven in a cup, you know? Okay. Oh, gosh, Joyce. Anyway, let me get back to what I'm saying. What kind? communities do we create with, as women? So create these spaces, we network as women, we meet each other, we take pictures. That's all great, well and good. We have conversations about balancing work life, entering into I don't know what, um, getting your first financial this and your first financial that. We do all of these things. Beautiful. That's one step. Do you know what men do? They have these small groups or they meet, they exchange business cards, and the next thing they're going after is, how can I help you achieve a goal that you have? How can I help you rise up? How can I help you? What is that thing you're going after? And how can I use my networks, my connections, my insights, my time to help you advance? And what is in it for me if I do help you along that journey? So as women, the second key challenge I think that I want us to begin to look at as we enter into 2024 is how can we change that narrative? My sister has an amazing community, Baron Garcia, called Vision Uplift, and we're going to be collaborating quite a bit this year, 2024, and on into the rest of this decade. And I'm really excited about what we can do. But Vision Uplift is a community specifically to empower uh, working moms, working mothers, right? So she has this triple E framework. She has this whole uh, personality development test leader. It, it blows my mind. She's brilliant. And I'm not just saying that because we're brilliant in our family. She is actually brilliant. Uh, and I'm really hoping I'll be able to share her genius with you in the days to come. But before then, you can hop on Instagram, follow her at Vision Uplift and um, yeah, follow her at Vision Uplift on Instagram. And I think she has a free, there's a free webinar that's coming up soon. So you need to get in there. And there's a paid retreat towards the end of January. So you also need to, you need to make yourself available because she's, she's plugged into something really, really genius. Anyway, so that's the second thing. The third thing that we need to be cognizant about, especially women of African descent, is that we need to balance work and family and that balance usually is not easy and when you recognize this is a unique challenge that mostly women of african descent face you will begin to find unique solutions to help you bypass it surpass it or just live with it right so on here is really what's your support system looking like are you team i can do bad all by myself and as i'm saying this i'm chuckling because a sister of mine had said to me, this hyper-independent lifestyle is not going to get you far. So one of the things I'm embracing, one of my words, my personal words for 2024, is collaboration. Another one is vulnerability. So keep me accountable to that, because those are two things that are a little, you know, shaky. Literally. Anyway, the fourth thing I want you to keep in mind is that the expectations of women are often lower. And while this is a challenge, at the same time, it's such a brilliant opportunity because you have the opportunity to step in there, to blow their socks off, and to showcase yourself as actually an excellent leader, an excellent worker, an excellent person in general. So because the barrier for women, say, oh, she's a woman. Have you heard that before? It annoys me personally. Oh, it's a woman. Sometimes I drive in, I, I live in the city of Lagos, Nigeria. And sometimes I drive and maybe I drive and I park and the security uh, uh, attendants will tell me something like, my goodness, you, the way you just parked, ah, now woman, wow, I thought it was a man that was driving to him, that's the highest compliment that I drove and parked so excellently that I, it was like a man that was driving the car. My point is, great things are not yet, so great things are expected, but there's still a certain subconscious thing in our society that it's a woman maybe it's going to be a little less so it's for you to say that thing is going to be that i would take this pillar of excellence and in my wheel of refinement that i will share with you in the coming weeks i will speak to this pillar on excellence 
you will take that pillar of excellence. You will make it your watchword, your DNA, your second nature, so that every time people encounter you, they get a superior level, a superior level encounter that they were even expecting. And the last thing to keep in mind, a challenge, I think, before I go into a few things to help us navigate is that women are often characterized as emotional. I don't know if you've heard it before. Oh, women are emotional, women are emotional. Yes, we're emotional. We have hormones that are running through our bodies. We have estrogen and I don't know what, and I don't know what. We have the time of the month where everything's going up and down. We are emotional. It's what it is. The question though is, how can we recognize, number one, our emotion, name our emotions, master our emotions, and channel our emotions? Those are the four things. Recognize, okay, I'm getting emotional now. Mm, that's it. That's the first step, recognizing. Second step is to name it. What emotion am I feeling right now? Is it, is it anger? Is it fear? Is it disappointment? Is it betrayal? Is it frustration? What am I feeling? That's number two. The third thing is to, um, what was the third thing I said now? <laughs> to recognize it, to name it, to master it. That does this situation always trip me up? Do I become angry when X, Y, Z always happens? Right, that's you now recognizing and mastering how it is that this situation does. It's okay, how can I now put certain things in place so that this thing doesn't trip me up any longer? And the final thing is, how can you now channel your emotions? Maybe it's anger I'm feeling because this is not done. But can I turn that emotion into a positive, uh, can I channel it into a positive use so that instead of flaring up and breaking out into and you know, really just screaming and yelling, is there another way I can channel it into a more productive use? Those are the four things that you do when it comes to emotions and this whole thing of women are emotional. You recognize it, you name it, you master it, and then you channel it, right? And the final thing I will share with you before I wrap up this video in a few minutes is what are some pointers that you can expect to see in 2024 and how can you take advantage of it? Number one, women leaders are the ones that are going to paint the future. I had a dance to that one because it, it blows my mind. And let me tell you why. You know, when it comes to our natural femininity, one of the things as women that we have is we're naturally intuitive, we're naturally creative, and we're extremely fluid, right? This is part of our femininity when we talk of embracing our femininity. Because of that, we have the ability to see very clearly a vision and to go very clearly after this vision that we've seen. And we need more senior leaders to provide this level of inspiration and direction for, for younger people in the organization. So that's one thing I want you to begin to think about and ask yourself even that as a female leader, whether I'm senior leader, mid-leadership, or just even stepping in, how can I begin to lean into my natural traits of creativity um, and intuition so that I can paint a compelling future for those who are doing life with me and doing work with me. The second thing is that unique transformational ideas are going to be brought to the forefront. Hmm. And again, this one is fantastic because due to the creativity that's inherent in a lot of women, we don't see in a two-dimensional way. A lot of men see in two-dimensional ways, but women who are tuned into their femininity tend to see in colors. So we see varied ways that things can happen. We see, trans we're able to look and see transformational ways of achieving the same goal. And if you want to make a marked difference in 2024, then you need to lean into that quality so that you can bring forth unique transformation and ideas in the forefront of your business, of your, in your career, even in your homemaking and in raising your children. So that's the second big thing I want you to watch out for and plug into as you move along. The third big thing is enhancement of teamwork. Again, when we talk about feminine leadership, one of the pivotal things is that women are better players, are better at building teams, are better at leading teams, and are better at fostering teamwork. If you want to go far in 2024 and in the rest of this decade, I want you to think about enhancing how you manage and navigate teamwork.
Make bold, wise decisions, yet foster cooperative environments in, in which you live and in which you work. And this can even be from how you navigate your domestic situation at home. Effectively profile each member of your team and use their individual profiles to draw their strengths to build what it is that you're trying to build. So everything is intertwined. Women leaders who will paint the future, women leaders who know how to bring forth unique transformational ideas that might not even necessarily come from them, but come from those who they're doing life with and who they are working with. And the third is taking all of this to enhance the level of teamwork um, and really utilizing that team as a powerful force. So fourth thing is that unique, uh, sorry, is that superior leadership values is what will set apart uh, some leaders from some other leaders. And what do I mean? Female leaders tend to be more honest. We tend to be more compassionate, more outgoing, and more creative. This is the year to lean into that creativity, uh, to lean into those superior leadership values and use that in your process of excelling. Okay. Fifth thing I want you to think about is that business-wide communication can be enhanced. Now, studies have shown that women tend to be better communicators because we can be more expressive. We allow our emotions to come forth in how we communicate. So we're able to pass across a message in a more compelling way. So enhance meaningful conversations. Enhance meaningful conversations with your coworkers, with your employees, with your partners, with your leadership team. Be deliberate about how you choose to converse, how you choose to pass across information, how you choose to cast your vision. The second thing is find a way of, of creating an open communication stream that gives a sense of clarity. The sixth thing I want you to think about as we go on into 2024 and the rest of this decade is that uh, female leaders tend to achieve better financial outcome, but you cannot achieve a better financial outcome if you have not mastered your personal financial situation, right? So this is the year to begin to clear up debt if you have debt, personal debt, to begin to you know, save, invest if you don't do that already, um, and just really to get your financial situation plugged in. And then from a corporate perspective or in, you know, in your business and all of that, a more diverse workforce usually means that you have more ideas. It means that you have uh, you can create more growth, increased productivity, and a lot of that leads to su sustained performance. So what tends to happen is that because there are more people putting their minds together, you have different people, not necessarily more, different types of people, different groups of people putting their minds together, um, you're able to come up with sustained ways of doing things, which ultimately could lead to better financial performance. And in general, women are better sometimes, 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 when you fix yourself, better at managing um, some money than, than men are. We can drive a bargain when we want. So take all of those skills that are inherent in us in other ways and put them towards your business um, and towards your career. Final four, five things I think I'm going to share with you is to embrace fresh new outlooks and perspectives. Embrace fresh new outlooks and perspectives. We're at such a pivotal time in this world. We've heard all the perspectives, all the doom and gloom. I don't listen to half of them if I'm being honest with you because I guard my mind. However, we cannot do things the way we've always done things. I am in a very volatile industry. So yes, I am the refined lady. I teach all these things. I teach about feminine leadership, etiquette and, all, and refinement and all the things I teach women and female leaders. But I'm also, or and I am also a marketing and branding executive, and I've been building multinational brands now for well over a decade um, across Western Africa. So, my business, my corporate business, is is very volatile. The industry is changing every day. The uh, landscape that we came into just a few years ago is drastically changing. Competition grows every day, and all of that. So, a way to win is to embrace fresh new outlooks and perspectives. We and you cannot do the same thing we did in 2020 or 2021 or 2022, or even just the concluded 2023 and expect a different outcome. So bring in your skills, embrace different perspectives and look at innovative ideas if you really want to win this year as a female leader, as a female founder. Right. The eighth thing I think I want now is 
better mentorship opportunities. So this goes two ways. Number one, 2024 is a year that you will commit to raising those that are coming after you. Who are you coaching? Who are you teaching? Who are you taking an interest in? And sometimes this does not have to be a formal, come sit down, let's have a conversation. I'm your mentor. Sometimes it happens that way. Sometimes it could just be, who are you giving an opportunity to? In my organization, there's somebody who, you know, I, I genuinely respect. I respect her work ethic and how she shows up and all of that. And, and I give her responsibilities. So I'm not sitting there saying, oh, you know what, I want to mentor you. No. My role in her life is to see how can I empower her? How can I help her bring to the fore the potential that I see in her? And how can I really help her become everything she was created to be? And if you hear that, that's the fireworks bringing in the new year. <laughs> so how can I help her do all of that? And how can you help the people around you? It can be your domestic staff. It can be the associates in your organization. How can you help people become the version of themselves that they wouldn't have been if they didn't encounter you? That's what mentorship is all about. And on the second hand is who is pouring into you? What are those spaces that you've created in your own life so that you can be filled, you can be pushed, you can be encouraged, and you can receive uh, strength from others, right? Those are the two things. Uh, ninth thing now, I think, is female leaders, women in general, have an ability to multitask. Have you ever seen, and this one I'm going to hone in here on mothers. Have you ever seen a mother, maybe she's on the phone while she's making milk for her baby or she might be feeding her baby and she's using the other foot to like rock the stroller with somebody else and she's maybe sending off an email while instructing a domestic staff to do something have you ever seen that type of thing before i have seen it a lot and if you are a woman that manages a home or manages a family or has children I want you to begin to think of all the skills you use in that setting and ask yourself how you can translate it into success when it comes to your business and your corporate career. Okay, so I want you to think about that because we have the ability to wear very many hats. We have the ability to multitask, but how are you putting that to the four and and there are many different schools of thought some school of thought say look uh, focus on one thing because when you constantly switch in your brain your productivity drops and i do agree with that to a certain extent however there are certain there are certain uh, principles that we have taken from that ability to wear multiple hats as mother wife daughter sister uh businesswoman uh i don't know what now uh, carer uh, philanthropist a speaker, teacher, author, we have the ability to wear so many different hats. My question is, you might not be doing it all at once, but how can you take that ability that you have to wear all those various hats and use it to propel yourself and your business and all of that forward? It's also something to think about. Ability to adjust. One of the things about the feminine nature and femininity is that we're very flexible and we're very fluid, most of us. So how can you adjust quickly? If you see something coming, oh, this wasn't there at the very beginning. Okay, how can you quickly adjust? How can you become flexible and fluid and agile to achieve the things you want to achieve, right? Finding solutions to real life work issues. The 10th thing I would say, and I will share two more after this and wrap this up because I cannot believe how much time I've spent on here. But the 10th thing I would say is you need to become an advocate for the next. It's not just enough for you to get into that room and shut the door behind you, no ma'am. You have to begin to ask yourself, how can I become an advocate for the next generation of women coming after me? How can I ignite my impact? And again, I'm going to be sharing on the wheel of refinement. And I think this is going to be so pivotal for you as we enter into 2024. And I hope I can begin to share on that next week. But... How can you ignite your impact this year? There are three things I want you to think about. The first is your confidence as a female leader. And what is one way you can grow confidence? You can grow confidence when you have grown your excellence of craft. That way you don't feel like an imposter. You don't feel like, oh, am I doing what I'm doing? Is it really, maybe, should I? No, you know that that business 
that work that you're doing, you have grown expertise in it over time. Well, can you still make mistakes? Of course. Are you still learning? Are there still opportunities to grow? Definitely. But you keep on evolving and creating and curating that excellence of your craft. And this is what leads to confidence. One way of igniting your impact is that you have to upskill your confidence a lot in the year 2024 and on through the rest of the decade. The second thing is you're, you have to have a growth mindset. One of the, and it's interesting, one of the pillars in the wheel of refinement is excellence. Another pillar in the wheel of refinement is personal development and, and growth. And this is the whole thing around your personal, your growth mindset. How are you growing? What's your plan to evolve? this year? What's your learning and training plan? What books are you going to read this year? And I'm not about read a hundred books in 365 days. <laughs> if you read a hundred books and the impact does not come, that's a waste of time, energy, and, and many things, right? What pivotal books are you going to read to plug the gaps that you have observed in your own life and in your leadership journey? So that's a growth mindset. What do you need to learn about your organization, about your current work that will really propel you in the days to come? growth mindset. What character traits do you need to drop or what character traits do you need to enhance that would help you as you go into the next growth mindset? Growth mindset is essentially there's nothing you need to know today that you cannot learn if you put time, effort, and energy. Okay? And the third thing about igniting your impact is networking. Again, this is another pillar under the wheel of refinement that I'm going to delve into in a few weeks. And networking, remember what I said earlier when I was sharing challenges. It is not just meeting people, but it's meeting people and asking, how can I serve your vision? And how can you serve my vision? How can we band together as a collective so that we have greater impact in the days ahead? So I'm going to share two more things with you that I want you to keep in mind and to ask yourself how you can plug into as you go into 2024 and through the rest of the decade is we have a natural ability to have um, high levels of emotional intelligence. Lean into that. Because where we're going, it's not just technical knowledge that will get you there, but you need to be able to read the room. You need situational awareness. You need to understand body language. There's a whole psychology of body language. You need to understand psychology of power. You need to understand what people truly want and what they will do to go after what it is that they want. You need to lean into your intuition, which is an inherent trait in feminine leadership. Right? So the 11th thing I will share with you is you have to have a high level of emotional intelligence. You have to hone your ability to be emotional intel emotionally intelligent, and you have to deliberately grow in that as we go on through 2024. The final thing I would say, final, okay, I'm going to do 30, round number 30. Second to the last thing I would say is lead by example. All these things I've spoken about, everything I've said here means nothing if you say one thing and you do another thing, because then you will come across as being inauthentic. And one of the first things in the wheel of refinement is authenticity. You have to lead by example. If you want to make all of these things pillars that will help you win in 2024, you have to become all of these things that I've just spoken about. Okay, so lead by example. And the final thing I would say is dream big. Dream big. This season is this new year and the rest of this decade is open to possibilities and probabilities. And there is, it's like wide open spaces and there's so much I cannot yet say, but it's literally like wide open spaces. And my question to you is, what are you dreaming about? What is your vision? What is your why? Why do you get up in the morning and do what it is that you do? And it has to be more than I want to be rich. Because money is as money does. Money is a tool to achieve certain things. That's it. Money is a tool. You need money. You might, what you might want is a vacation. Yeah, money can get you that, but someone can also give to you a vacation. Do you see? So money is, is, is a means to an end. It's not the end in of, of itself. So what is your end? 
What's that legacy you want to leave behind? What's that problem you want to solve? I have seen a problem I want to solve. And unfortunately, or fortunately for my world, I cannot unsee it. I don't want to unsee it. I've seen vividly what can happen in my mind's eye when I sit and I do my own vision sessions. I've seen what can happen when women all across the globe rise up, lean into how they were naturally wired to be and lead from that place. Oh my goodness, it is combustive. It's powerful. I don't want to stress and strain and compete and try and show I can meet so I can do. I, can. I, mean, I studied electronics engineering. I remember distinctly there was a class we had and I think it was my second year. And there was this huge machinery that we had to, you know, like it, it then it was like manual thing. You had to pull because I was building something, right? And, you know, you had to pull it and I was the only girl. And I tried with all my energy and I just realized, listen, I can try and do this thing and it might take me a lot longer to put it or i can raise my hand and ask for help i can say listen in my brain i have drawn the blueprints for this thing i have put all the connections i think should go into this box i have measured it these are all the dimensions i want but you see this i don't know how many kg thing i cannot lift it with the body that i have and seeing as I'm not going to change my body, this thing has to work for me because what you need in this instance is my brain power, not necessarily my physical strength. So I raised my hand and I said, uh, can you help me turn this? I've done all the measurements, I've laid it here, I've done everything, I just need it to spin so it can actually cut what it is it needs to cut. Lean into your strengths. Strength-based leadership, lean into your strengths. Understand what's unique about you and understand what it is that you have. I'm so excited to be back. I cannot believe I spent this much time with you, but I really wanted to share what was on my heart for 2024 in terms of female leadership and refinement and all of that. So let me know in the comment section what has sat with you, what you're taking away from this, what you're going to begin to put into practice and what you're looking forward to in 2024. I will see you soon. And last thing before I go, stay tuned. I believe in February or towards the end of February, I will open up formally the registration to the Refined Ladies Membership Club. It's yummy. That is juicy. I wish I can tell you how juicy it is. I don't know. But it's going to be so phenomenal. So start saving up for that because you want to get in as soon as it launches. I think it has something really, really exciting for you. I love you. I honor you. I'm really glad to be on this journey with you. And I cannot wait to celebrate our shared wins this year, 2024, and the rest of this decade. God bless you, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye now.